Hey everybody, it's Adrienne. So as you know, when I'm sitting on the floor, we're gonna be talking about bustles because this is where bustles begin, is sitting on the floor, looking at a beautiful train of a dress and discerning how to get it up off the floor for dancing, how to make it durable, fashionable, uh, you know, all the good things. Today's focus is going to be a little bit more on combination style bustles. And also I wanna go over a little bit of uh, vocabulary um, and talk about a little more of the technical side versus the artistry. Now, there's always that blend. There's always a blend and a balance, but I wanted to go over a little bit of definitions just to get kind of everybody on the same page. I feel like that's the only thing that's troublesome about bustles is that there's a lot of different uh, verbiage used depending on where you are in the world, and it can make it kind of difficult to figure out what's going on. Um, so I'm going to lay down my definitions that I'm going to be using today so that way you know what I'm talking about. It's okay if you use different words than I do, but that way you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, I try to stay really consistent to myself, but it's hard because I also want to acknowledge regional differences in uh, terminology so that we all know what's going on. So I have this dress. I'm going to do a quick, quickie quick overview of and then I'm gonna bring out my samples to show, and then I have an actual bride's dress. Well, this one's also an actual bride's dress too, but she's picking it up really soon, so I won't have it for as long as I would like. Um, but I have an actual bride's dress with a combination style bustle to go over. And uh, when we talk combinations, uh, a combination bustle has two different ways to, to uh, define it. And the first one is separating the layers out and handling them each with their own type of bustle. So perhaps doing an American bustle on the lining and doing a French on the actual, you know, self portion, the outer of the train. I don't necessarily use the word combination to describe that scenario because I feel like that's just handling it appropriately based on each layer. So for me, a combination bustle definition is when you're using multiple styles of bustle pickups on one layer. So on the top layer of the dress, if you're mixing French and American, maybe doing a little ballroom tuck up under the corners to handle some like scallops or something, that's a combination bustle. So that's what I really wanted to touch on most is how to handle a train that needs more than just one or two points or three points or five points. What do you do when you have something that requires a little bit of extra detail to refine it and really make it look well thought out and beautiful. Okay, so first things first, let's go over a little bit of definition on anchor points and pickups. So those are the key terms when you're talking about building any sort of bustle. So the anchor point is the height or the level at which you're placing a piece of hardware to connect to a pickup point. So the pickup point is a spot out in the field of the skirt that will be lifted to match the anchor point and be secured in place to get the uh, hemline of the train floor level or whatever level finish you're going for. Sometimes people want a little bit of a sweep to the bottom of the train. Um, those two words are the most important part to this. Now, the other thing that's important is to mark them consistently. So pickup points, I always mark with a safety pin so that I do not lose them because, uh, well, you don't wanna lose any of your markings, obviously, but this is the main one you don't wanna lose is the pickup spots. Cause I feel like um, these are just the most critical uh, measurements on there. And you want them to be differently marked so that you don't confuse them with each other and so the wrong type of uh, connector to one or the other. Um, I have a pin right here, sorry. <laughs> that was wild. Could you imagine if that was in 3D? Um, you're going to mark the anchor point with a safety pin or um, a straight pin, just like this, a yellow headed one. Now you can do a combination of the two. Um, you can use two and then cross them to mark it. So you have one placed horizontally to mark the anchor point and then one to actually like hold the anchor point up uh, in place, hold the pin up, pick up in place when you're marking it out. So these two pins are the most important ones for marking. You'll need these. The question always arises of how, you know, how to know what hardware to use for each style. And honestly, it's good to know all of the different types so that you can really use them to your advantage based on what's in front of you. Because sometimes you're going to need to use several different types of attachment styles and knowing how to use all these would be really helpful. So I'm gonna start kind of like old school traditional 
grow grain and satin ribbon. You can use colored ones to match the lining. And grow grain has a little bit of a texture to it that gives a little bit more like, um, you know, just a little bit more friction so it holds in place really well. This is good for heavy trains, for crepe, um, satin. This is this does a lot of work. Now this is typically used for an anchor point. You can combine this with a loop made out of the crochet thread and build yourself kind of a combination of these two. This can be one style. Um, you can also make the loop out of itself and stitch this on with, um, I think this would be either three or four stitches wide and then you know several passes to connect it. That could be the loop that goes with this. You could also do a ring. I haven't done rings in forever, so I don't have one even to, to show. Um, everybody knows what the rings look like. I feel like they've existed forever. Um, I just don't use them because of a lot of reasons. Number one being, I like the look of a uh, machine tack over a hand tack for the outside anyways. And you have to, now I have seen people use a zigzag to go over a ring before. It's just not something that I would think of doing. I don't keep a zigzag machine handy because my industrials don't do a zigzag. So um, these two are, I would say these are a little bit less common, the, the satin one. I do use satin for a lot of things though. Again, knowing all of these will really help you so that you know when to use them. Organza. This is just good old organza from Wawak. This is the quarter inch stuff. I have both white and ivory. This stuff is amazing for a lot of reasons. Um, if you don't have this in your sewing room, you should because this um, can be used to do belts and straps and all kinds of things. Now, the key with this stuff is you can actually um, thread this through a needle and you can sew this in directly see you cut it at an angle bam. you can sew that right into the fabric and make yourself a um, you know for a French bustle or something you can actually sew that directly into the fabric so not even needing a sewing machine for that um, the key to that though is having a needle that has the appropriate head size for that to be able to pull it through I have a few needles up here to show you um, because these all these all intermix they all kind of go with each other depending on what the situation is now these are the sashiki needles from Wawak. These are for um, mending or darning. They're like a Japanese style. They have a gold head. And these fit beautifully into the buttons from Wawak. And these are a different, um, these are from Amazon. You always want to make sure that the needle fits, but also you want to make sure that it fits while it's threaded because that's the whole point. So whatever you're going to be threading this with, you'll want to test it out and see that you like how it forms threading a needle on camera is a hoot but you'll want to make sure that all of this fits together so that it functions for what you're doing now you can combine these in a variety of ways as well you can cross I have done loops out of this sheer organza backed with a button that goes right through so that also works for an American or even for a French connection point, depending on you know the dress composition and what you're needing it to do. So that works. Um, this also can be hit with a lighter to seal off the ends and make it nice. It does get kind of gangled up when you sew the end of it. When you see it. So pulling it through fabric does make it a little weird. I always cut this a hair longer than I would um, you know, regular ribbon. Uh, just so I can clean it up. I don't want to leave that in a dress looking like this. Obviously, it's not like bad. It just doesn't look cute. Um, the other type of needle I have out here besides like a standard, I have a standard darning needle. She's a little crusty rusty because she's one of my faves. She fits everything all the time. and She has a good sharp tip. Now with a darner, you have to be careful because not all darners have a, like a tip. They're all um, rounded. And I need better words to describe needles because sometimes the taper on the needle tip starts really far back and they end up being really sharp at the tip and catch your fingers. I actually like a less catchy needle for sewing a bustle so that way I'm not going to accidentally snag anything else. But I want it to be sharp enough that it'll poke through the layers. So I feel like everybody's always looking for the perfect needle, but you have to figure out what's good for you and what attachment styles you do most often and that'll really help. Now this one, I keep this handy. This is a, let's see if we can actually see what any of that looks like. 
Can you see how it's faceted? This is for leather working. So it's a, a triangular tip needle. I don't know if it's gonna show in this direction. This is super thick all the way down the whole needle. This is really, really good for ultra thick dresses, but you have to use this cautiously because it does break the fabric. Um, instead of like moving the fibers out of the way, this will bust through it. This is helpful if you're doing a thick sandwich, multi-layered, like an underneath layer. So not a top layer necessarily because this, this does some damage. This is helpful to have. This sews a very, very functional, very sturdy bustle. Um, this one is also good for um, putting uh, hangers, the hanger loops back on under the arms or at the back seam. This is a good needle to have, but you have to just be careful because this is this will damage a lot of stuff if you are not paying attention. So keep it handy, but not so close that you're going to accidentally mix it up with anything. The other one that I use, not as often, but just hooks. Hooks and eyes, but again, sparingly. I feel like I reach for snaps, clear snaps, more than I do a hook and eye um, for bustles, just because there's not a lot for this to catch onto. It's a very small, and the way that it pivots, I don't love. So not that this makes a bad bustle, but you have to know when to use this. I feel like this is good for um, attaching detachable uh, trains, um, waistband, you know, holding the, the placket over a zipper at the waist. There's a lot of really good applications that are adjacent to bustle building, but this is not one that I reach for often. Plus it, it I mean, it's visually it's present. Um, whereas a clear snap is a little bit more soft and a little bit more blendy <laughs> for photos, if you know what I mean. So it is good to know when to use all these items. And then as far as buttons go, I think we all have a favorite button from Wawac, either 18s or 20s. Um, they have kind of just a, a lightly squared edge to them. Um, but I've also been checking out some ones from Amazon, and these are a little bit more round at the edge, and they're just a hair larger, just a hair larger. Um, and you can see even in like me holding them up, the clarity is different on each of them. So it's worth checking out some different varieties of um, buttons based on manufacturer just just to know what other brands are like and you should always be checking your sourcing and making sure you're getting good prices on everything um, I think we all learned from that cup shortage back in the day here that you should have multiple sources to buy all your supplies so that you don't run out of anything and then not know what's going to be out there for you to use okay so these are all the types of materials for sewing a bustle in and then all the different arrangements really are based on what the dress looks like and what's in front of you. So these could be sewn in any number of combinations to make the loops or the ribbons or, you know, for a ballroom bustle. Like these are, these are the staple items. So how do we use them? What are we actually looking for? Let's go over to a dress and take a look. And so this next example is a David's Bridal and each layer of the skirt is cut different width. Now the top layer is the one that trips most all of us up because it's a single layer of sheer tool and what do you do with that now this one I wouldn't even consider a combination necessarily but this has three different attachment styles all going on in here and I think the key to this one is using something very durable and strong for at least the center point and then I have a clear snap to bring up the single layer of tool up to the actual top where it's going to connect here and then I also went ahead and covered the button that it's going to connect over i just covered it with a little hook and eye at the waist to make that be just a little bit more blended and flawless when it's all tucked up in place so that layer is handled in that way the bottom layer i have a single ribbon through the um through the actual lace here tied and then uh, like an american style pickup loop right there that'll pull out so that's going to tie right up to there and then on the actual underneath layers, we're in the skirt. So on the underneath layers, this combines all of these onto a single point up here, an American. And when it's done, this is a very unassuming looking bustle. And it's very, very pretty, but I really did try to pick up multiple pieces all in one go and it just did not want to do the thing. So because all three of these fabrics are so different, it really needed a whole different um, 
handling for each layer because it was just not doing anything cute otherwise. Let me go ahead and pin this one up and you can see what it'll look like. Part of the reason you want to make sure you use a really durable one on the top layer on this tool is because snaps don't really hold weight. They're just to connect two items. Um, as far as like this type of strength they have, they don't have this type of strength. They have this type. So anything side to side they can do, but not this direction. <laughs> I'm just reminded of the little mama shark there. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to throw this center one. This is organza ribbon. I'm going to throw it over the button at the center and snap. And then snap. Now, I know a lot of people love the fishing line, you know, the clear loops to make with this. Um, I just haven't gotten enough experience with using that particular um, material. Organized. And then I want to take you up close so you can see this waste. Okay, so first things first, we're going to talk a little vocabulary here. This is a dress that I'm working on. I have the bustle all installed and it's up right now. So I have three different levels of anchor attachments uh, right here along the top for the top layer. I have another anchor attachment point lower for the liner. And then there's a third height here for the center layer. So stepping back, I have one level here, one level here, and one level here. And the reason for that is because if I were to put all these anchors at the same level, the dress was really chunky and it just did not look right. Partially due to the fact of how the dress was cut itself, each layer is a different width, different fabric, different you know movement. Um, it also just looked better on her body because it kind of distributed can see from the side it kind of distributes the fabric in a really even way to where it really looks unproblematic and it still looks really really unproblematic just from out here even it's very smooth and, and simple looking um, and you can see if we spread this out here my second layer is connected here so definition wise anchor is the position of attachment so wherever you choose to install um, your pickup points. Now the pickup point is the actual spot in the skirt where you install something to anchor. So this is your pickup, this is your anchor. So those two words I use all the time. When you're marking them with a pin, um, you wanna do it the same way every time so that way if you pick up your dress late at night and you're tired, you know what you're looking at. I always mark a pickup with a safety pin and I mark an anchor with a straight pin, a yellow head pin. Now on this dress, I could have chosen to anchor right at the waistline here, but it covered up a lot of the flowers. So some artistic decision was made here in how to place this and just to organize everything so that way it looked really nice with the dress and with her body and you know being very flattering in both directions. Okay, so right up here, I have my button and then I sewed a little eye with crochet thread to cover this over. Let's see if I can get it with one hand. Boop. Basically, it's gonna cover over the top of that button, and that way this can just all be free flowing. 
Now, the key with the style of bustle and dress is to 100% get the bride's approval on the design because there's no way to make this to any degree where every seamstress loves this. You can French this top layer and it still looks kind of wild. Um, it's They're hard to handle. The tool are hard to handle, especially when there's not enough seams on the skirt because the seams give you a natural place to put your pickups and then bring everything up. So what do you do when you're in the middle of nowhere? To me, this is a good one because the, the snaps hold in place well enough because again, you're putting the pull downwards and they're clear enough that they're not gonna be causing a total visual clog on the skirt when it's down. So that's how that one looks. Okay, and so that's how that looks with that little leaf covered over to close the waist. Now, since this style is usually really challenging for people, this is one that I would definitely do a combination on. And I'm gonna show you on this sample, because they're really similar style. This has very, very soft tool. I do have the benefit of some seams, some extra seams back here. So I have the center and then I have a left, right, and then our side seams too. So that gives me a little bit more places to lift than on this one that just had two back panels. But I'm gonna show you where I would throw the anchors and what I would do to evaluate this bad boy here. Okay, this seems to be a better angle for the dress. I don't look cute from this angle, but oh well, that's just life. Okay, so picking up just the center point doesn't really do enough down here. I still have long edges. So what I'm gonna do is pick up two just on either side and see if I can lift it, box it directly up or if I can bring the two points together onto the center seam. Now, the difference between picking up two points and bringing it to one and boxing it out is the volume. So this is the height you need to go for, but do I want to just bring straight up and have it flat to itself? Or do I want to connect it so that each um, point just goes right to itself and then onto the center one here. That's a decision that you'll make once you see what the top layers are doing. I have a feeling on this dress, it would be better suited if I went ahead and boxed it out and made it flat. So let me see how that looks. So now with any bustle, mirroring is really, really helpful so that you can have the whole bustle pinned up and make sure you get the bride's approval. Um, the dress might be uneven side to side. So if you do notice that you need to do something different, like if it's not picking everything up, you can check and make sure the dress is even side to side, or if the bride has a high hip, it might not be side to side even ever. Okay. So let's see here. Now on this, this is a stretchy liner, like ITY or something like that. I would just use a um, crochet thread loop and a button. Um, you could do ribbon on this one too, that would be fine. Uh, sometimes what I end up doing for figuring out the bustle attachment is the type of person that's putting it up. So if somebody has, like if their grandma's the one tying up their bustle and they have arthritis, I will opt more for a ribbon that can be tied more easily than a tiny fussy button. Um, I had a bride once her mom was colorblind, so I didn't do a color-coded bustle, I did ribbon types. Um, Okay, so this is what this looks like so far, and that's gonna get us a good level at the bottom, but I think I'll go ahead and put a third right at the center there just to like support everything so it stays really flat and really flush. I think that'll be really nice. Okay, so that's how that looks. I think that's gonna be really nice. Uh, now you do have to take into account this is stretchy, so when you place it, if it's too heavy and it starts pulling, you have to raise all your points up a little bit, but I think that's gonna be really nice, really unproblematic and smooth, so now we can get our top layer figured out. Now, some people might just use one or two points under here, which is totally fine. I do try to be conservative with my point count, but I also am going for a really nice flat finish under here. So do what you gotta do. Um, if you're listening to the budget and if you really need to um, truncate the number of points, you're gonna have to settle for a little bit more fabric on the floor. That's just how it's gonna have to be. So your level of perfection does match the count of the points. Um, but you don't want it to be so difficult that they struggle putting it up either. So you're looking for a good balance there too. Okay, so let's talk about where we might wanna put the anchor points on this dress. 
So we have the waistline right at this point here. Uh, we also have these floral tips. Now, depending on what the bride thinks of her shape and her dress, she might not want to go all the way to the waist and cover up all this detail. Now, she might like that it gives a little bit of a booty finish, so she might love it being that high and kind of thick and fluffy. So feedback is really helpful, and honestly, when I don't have a model in here, it does make it hard because I can show different styles that look good, but like it will be different for each person. Now, I don't tend to choose one at the end of the... Um, button row because it gets real close to looking like it's coming out of the butt so if they really really like these buttons and want them to show you might want to consider a French for the top layer just to like tuck it under let's see what that looks like okay and when you're setting up for a French grab a handful of the fabric and just get an idea for where it needs to go in relation to what's going on down here and then you're gonna to wanna to straighten out all of your seams. So use this as a, a height guide, but straighten this all up before you throw it up just in case it gets all weird. Okay, and that's what I mean by lining everything up. So you can see I stacked the center seam on all the pieces that I'm grabbing, they're all connected. So now I can tuck this up inside. The goal when I pin these is to make it so perfect, so even, so smooth that I can just go sew this and not have to do any more math or figuring. Okay, so that's the first one there pinned up, and you can see I still have a little bit left on the floor, so I'll probably need to do a second pickup. I like to establish the first one, though, and just see how it looks, and this is the height. That's the furthest I can go to actually attach something there based on how the dress is constructed, um, and so that's where I would want to set the first fold anyway. And then this is usually when the brides are like, I love it, I hate it. You can kind of get some direction for, um, for the rest of the points. Let me see how this one pins out. Okay, so now what I did was I go from this fold and I'm just gonna like draw some imaginary lines in my mind. And I ran into the seam here and I went ahead and pulled it out flat with the dress and the liner to see where I might wanna pick up. And I'm gonna throw this up and see how this looks because I think that could get us floor level on the sides. And then maybe the center back will flip up being an actual combination bustle. And then this is a really good example of why when you pin it to itself, it can look really weird, but it's not actually gonna be weird when you sew it. So if you wanna transfer how you're anchoring it to the lining right now so they can see it, that's a really good idea. Um, what I'm also gonna do, so that handled the side, so that's in a really good location, kind of undulating and cute. Um, now you can figure out if you want to do another French with this guy, or if you want to do an American and like tuck it up underneath, you know, like that, that could be cute. Um, the other thing to consider is where to pick things up down here, because as you get to the bottom, you're going to start seeing lots of unevenness because of how the tacking and the different layers goes. So one rule of thumb that I have is to go between the tacks and pick a point that's between here because it will help pull up more of that center and kind of help manage that length, if that makes sense. Okay, so I went ahead and moved that anchor pin to the lining, just so you can see how that already changes the shape of everything. Can you see how different that looks now? So you can use that to get the height of everything, but actually putting your anchor point on the liner just makes everything so much softer. Now I'm not saying this is cute just yet, but you can see the difference with how it falls because it's not gonna be pulling through all the layers. Your pickup line can go through the seam and be really strong and sturdy and kind of help organize the layers even a little bit. So that is a really cool um, way to handle that. Okay, so I'm sitting back just a little bit more. So I have um, the right hand side kind of looked at. I'm thinking it could be cool to ballroom the bottom using the tacks as my pickup points. That could be really, really pretty. I don't love how this is sitting right now. I'm just in brainstorming mode right now. Um, but that could be really pretty using the tacks as my pickup points all at the bottom. The only thing that is a bummer, obviously you have to reset the manufacturer tack because you can see it kind of makes a little pucker, um, is that this cannot touch the floor because this fold will destroy the tool and that is not a cute moment for anybody, so it would have to sit a little bit higher. Now, there's probably a lot of solutions that would look really good on this, uh, this dress, but this is where having a bride give you feedback is really helpful. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and arrange this a little bit. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into an American and see how this looks. So I actually took that first, that French point, and I brought it up to the waist. And there is actually a way to make this look really cute up here. So instead of covering the flowers, you can lift this and turn it into like a snap, a snap-on item, or you can tuck a button under there instead. You see how there's like a little bit of space? You can kind of convert that to be um, buttoned or connected or tied or snapped or whatever you like want to do underneath there so that way it doesn't cover that. That's always a really fun option. I'm going to see about using my seams and um, letting those help me be a strong point because you can hide a um, crochet loop in the seam really, really well because it blends in and picking up all the layers. So I'm going to see if that works for this um, and just kind of smooth out the skirt layers because you can see I have like, it's like buckled right now a little bit. Um, this is in the right spot, the center one, and it's smooth. I'm going to move this guy and see if I can get him to tuck maybe like in there, like underneath and see if that looks good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is kind of judge all my layers around and see how they fall on top of each other because the skirt lining doesn't have a seam here, but the tool does. And it's just one, <laughs> the top layer has a seam here. So I'm just gonna look for it to be distributed kind of nicely and make sure it kind of lines up with the tack at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna throw a pin somewhere in here and start lifting and seeing if I'm in the right spot. I'm a little too high. Again, smoothing. Okay. Now, some brides are never going to love how the bottom like looks chunky on this type of hem, so you just have to do your best and explain what the finish will look like. And if they really, really hate the bottom being kind of variegated, then a ballroom bustle is probably the best, like, or the combination doing the ballroom a little bit at the bottom to smooth it out. It does make it be more costly because it's more work. Okay, actually that looks really good. I'm gonna mirror this. I'm gonna hold my center point out. And I'm just gonna mirror for the sake of measurement. I need to actually flatten it out on the other side though, so. Okay. Oop, so there we go. Have I used all my fudgy pens? I have. It's been a busy week. Okay. Breaking my own rules here. I'm going to do the same thing where I kind of distribute. I'm looking for the lining to be smooth. Looking for this to be distributed. And I'm looking for it to be lined up with the tack down here. So hopefully it doesn't twist. I don't want any twisting happening. Okay. So let's pull this up into that cute little spot. It actually is right where that seam joins. So it's helpful when your anchor is like a landmark spot too. So you can say, follow your seams. You know, that is helpful. Pull this up. Let's see how this looks. This also gives me that nice, um, kind of triangular look. I like when the center point is just a little bit higher, so that way it's not just a big straight line across their back. Okay, let me see if I can pin this to look like how I'm explaining it where the, ooh, where the leaf is behind, or where the fabric is behind the leaf. Oh, I did it. Okay, let me flip the camera around. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. See how we can kind of like wrap the leaf over the, the hardware, whatever you decide to do. That looks really nice. And then same thing here, we can put a button or hardware and that ends up being right on the seam too. So it'll be a nice strong place to connect that. That is very successful. Now, the problem that most people have is this down here. So this type of skirt does this and this is when we have further discussions about how to handle this because not everybody will be okay with this. Not every bride vibes with this situation. So this is when you need to choose a different bustle style then because there's really not a lot to do to mitigate this type of look. And honestly, I don't hate this either. If she was wearing a tiny bit of a taller shoe than how my mannequin is set up for right now, this would be, to me, this would be absolutely fine. Um, 
but not every bride is going to go for this and also you can see how picking it all up together the lining is short compared to the top layers and it kind of bubbles this is honestly just a this is a characteristic of this style and it's something you either love or you hate and that's why this dress is super challenging for people because um, this is a very cost effective bustle to do unless you hate that then that becomes what causes the bustle to get so expensive because you have to do a lot more points in a different style. Now, a girl with no booty would also really love this because it gives a little bit of volume back here, but someone with a booty is probably not gonna like this as much either. So let me see if this ballroom bustles like just all the way under. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so at the bottom where all the tacks are, it would be very appealing to just go ahead and use the tacks as your pickups, but this is when using a spot in between might actually help you do more work because these are already following with like the the fabric already sticks together here it's kind of got that puppet vibe it's already following here and here so where it's not following is here so if we pull in between that might do a little bit more work for us which is awesome now the center back seam i always do i always do seams because that's just that's just good form you know that just makes a lot of sense but anywhere that is struggling like you can see that this side right here there's just a lot of tool between so i might want to do my pickup right here to kind of help do more lifting at this juncture so i'm going to start flipping this up and see how it looks okay so let's see here let me kind of spread this out a little bit now starting at the center seam is always a good idea Always my favorite place to start. I'm gonna find the floor level here. I'm gonna throw a pin in it. So I have something to hang on to. I'm gonna flip this under. And put a pin in it. And let's see. Let's see where that starts us off at. Okay, so you probably wanna raise it up just a hair. Again, you don't want this fold to be like on the floor getting destroyed because it will. I'm going to go around and just start kind of laying in the fold. Some brides immediately hate this when they see it because it, you know, gets rid of the train altogether and they don't love that. But this is kind of when I feel that out for the bride as I'm working. Okay, and you can see even even with this style, it still wants to do lots of shifting and bubbling and moving around. So even this doesn't fully solve this one either. You're, what you're looking for is um, what the bride likes the best out of all of these, obviously. Okay. Woo. So that's kind of how, oh, that didn't even catch through everybody. There we go. So that's starting to do something. It's not looking terrible. Okay. And this one, again, can be challenging because this top layer is so much bigger, it'll have kind of a bubbly look when it's done. So distributing it is kind of helpful. Okay, so let's back the camera up and I'll show you how this looks. Okay. So I don't necessarily love how this will look either, but it does get everything tucked up and under. This definitely requires a lot more finesse 
to do because you're still gonna have extra looking fabric at the bottom, no matter how you slice it, because there's just actually physically more fabric to these outer layers than the underneath ones. I'm gonna try something different where the layers still stay together, but we handle each of them differently. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this looks like the American we just did. However, I've only picked up the tool layers. So the lining layer is just chilling under here. And I'm gonna put some points just on the lining layer up to the inside of itself and see if I can get some management at the bottom here because this could give us a totally different effect without untacking the bottom. So you can separate these and put snaps down here, but if you've ever done it, it's a pain in the butt and it adds a lot of expense and it adds a lot of uh, accuracy problems. So let me see how that looks compared to the standard American I did at the beginning. Okay, so I'm excited to see how this looks on the camera because I think this is pretty cool. So what I did was grabbed the lining kind of like like where her like knee would be on the side and on the side and brought it to the center back of the zipper and it added a lot of really cool texture. And like, okay, you have to lean into the design sometimes. This is leaning into it. So this kind of matches the undulating situation happening here. So all these long points can just be long and now they're not on the floor. That's kind of cool looking. It does have some volume, but again, all the fabric's not sitting at one place. So it's managed really interestingly. I'd have to really look at this and decide if I like it. I'm gonna take some pictures of it and see. This kind of looks really cool. I like that because this just lets these long parts be long. The short parts are high, but they kind of get tucked away anyways. And it kind of just like recreates that texture up there, but you still get the smoothness at the waist. Oh, I love that. This is what I would call an actual combination bustle because all of these different things are on the same layer combining to create a whole different look. That's really cool. I kind of love that. What do you guys think? Is this the ugliest bustle ever? <laughs> Everybody's got different opinions, which is why this is honestly such a complicated topic to talk about. But this has given us three anchor points. One, two, and then the lining, we have a third. So this is just very managed. You know, whether or not you like how this looks, it could be overmanaged. This, you know, bride might hate this totally. But that is a really cool finish to know how to do and how to combine these all together. Okay, so this is the dress I was talking about that has the really awesome shadow train going on. This is all sheer through the back here. And this can stump a lot of people when they're sitting down to figure out how to bustle this. Now, I haven't seen this, so please ignore all the wrinkles for this minute. I'm, my steamer is on right now. I just wanted to get a chance to get this recorded because this is a very cool bustle. And we'll see if we can capture it on the camera. So, first things first. There's a little liner portion underneath. And look at this. The lining has tool on it, so that way it's sheer all the way back through to her legs. Isn't that fun? How do you put a bustle on that? So what I have done on this particular train is pull all of my points back to the lining as much as possible versus like the top ones bustling to the self of the, the dress. So these ribbons, in here reflect the um, side points. There's two pairs and I have them coordinated by type of ribbon. So I have shears and I have satin in here. So they will coordinate with the pairs of loops that they're tying to. Now this little guy here um, is a very unpopular style for everybody. I sewed directly onto the tool with the organza ribbon doing three passes of three stitches long to make a tack about um, it makes a little square. So it makes a little square and I have my little loop on here. And then this one gets tied right up to the center. So it's an American but with a French attachment method. Because I feel like a button and loop would have ripped out right here. And I really haven't crossed over to trying um, clear fishing line yet. 
I need to practice that a little bit more and see if it's something that I want to include. Okay, my mannequin is almost her height, so there's that. Now for the rest of these, there's a myriad of loops sewn through. I sew my loops through the body of the, the train because otherwise it won't lift everything up. This is a bagged liner style construction. So if you don't catch everything, it won't pick up off the floor. And I'm sure you could figure out how to do the math for it like to puff it itself up, but why? Why, why do that? Um, so this particular one, when I explain it to her, is gonna take a hot minute because um, these sections do tie to themselves versus to the liner. So that's partially why I made sure to coordinate the types of ribbon with the types of loops. So this particular one is satin to satin, like this. And then this loop here above it is going to tie to the ribbon set on the lining. So this is why I wanna make sure I coordinate with people really, really well on their bustle tutorials because otherwise this looks like a crazy mess in here. And you can put whatever kind of coding you want on this, but at the end of the day, nothing beats a video and a practice session with a mother of the bride. Like nothing beats that. Bridesmaids, three or four of them, still beats it any day of the week for me. So what I'm gonna have them do is probably tie up sections at a time when I'm showing them the tutorial. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tie this all up right now and then flip it out and show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so I'm almost done tying this off, but I wanted to show you the reason why I like anchoring to the lining, because this is a really good example of it right here. So you can see my anchors are actually here and here on the lining, and this is where I pinned it at the fitting. And you can see my pin marks still, which is why I gotta steam this, but those would leave dimples on the fabric on the outside and would cause pulling if I didn't do that. So instead, I transferred my marks to the lining for my anchors. And yeah, it's a little more complicated to like tie, but the resultant look is so good. Look at that. So now we have support, but no dimpling. Isn't that awesome? So all that that really requires of you is to mark it correctly at the pinning, but um, you can still put it on the outside. Sometimes it is too tight and too hard to get the pin for anchoring it on the lining. So as long as you are confident about your measurements and you move it to the right spot on the lining, you're gonna be just fine. Hottest day ever for a bustle tutorial, huh? Okay. And it is a little bit easier to show them once it's on an actual person with, you know, legs. It's amazing how long everything takes once you start recording. And there we go. Look at that cool finish. And then depending on how you arrange it for your photo, makes a little bit of difference too. There we go. Now this type of style, I always call it undulating. So it's really hard to keep it like perfectly symmetrical when she's walking, but isn't that such a cool look? Let me flip the camera around. So this is how this looks when it's all tied up. And again, the layers have a chance to like move with the bride, but they are anchored safely to the liner portion, which is perfect. And then this part up here is not gonna dimple in towards her body. It'll just have that nice scoop towards the sides. All right, I gotta get to steam in this. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this introduction to combination bustles. And as you can see, being under a train makes your hair not cute at all. And you know what I totally just remembered? I put my hair up with one of these. <laughs> Have you guys seen these? I've been trying to find new gadgets for my sewing room 
These are pins that hold your bobbin to your threads. And you know what is really cool? I think you're technically supposed to shove the whole thing down the bobbin hole, but if you don't, if you go half, it also holds it onto your combs. Very, very exciting stuff. <laughs> so just as a side note, if you guys need that, these exist on the internet and that's pretty cool. Um, I'm always on the hunt for anything to like organize better because as you can see, I'd rather be thinking about this than organizing, you know, where this particular color of thread bobbin went and stuff like that. So if you guys have any questions on anything that I've talked about today, please feel free to leave a comment or reach out to me in the group and let me know what you're dealing with. And I would absolutely love to draw you a diagram or see what I can do to be helpful to you if you're working on a really difficult bustle. Oh, sometimes it's just nice to have somebody to commiserate with when one is really complicated and giving you lots of fits. So top tip, if you're having a really hard time with a bustle, separate your layers and look at them one at a time and just, just handle it one layer as you go and each layer will get easier and easier as you work through it. Alrighty, well that's going to be all for me for today. I hope you guys have a great day or night wherever you are. And if you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to. I don't have a regular content schedule yet because that's just how my life goes. Um, but I talk about, I don't want to say interesting stuff and then be like, oh, nobody else talks about interesting stuff. But I feel like I talk about stuff that is weird or unusual or um, technical about bridal sewing and stuff that... Um, I try not to copy like what other people are doing. So if you want something specific, feel free to holler. I probably won't do tutorials on stuff that there's a million things out there for already. There is a lot of good content that exists about bustles, but I feel like it's fun to just go in a little bit deeper with definitions and technical stuff because, you know, it can be really difficult. So, alrighty, well, I'm going to stop talking at you for now. You guys have a great one. Bye.